Thanks everyone for joining us today. First we will have Kia Nurse and then we'll have Kylie Shook. Um, please raise your hands if you have questions and we will do our best to get to everyone. Um, we'll start with Haley McGoldrick. Hi Kia, um, obviously with the last two months everything going on, with injuries and everything, you know you come here to win games, might not be in the season you wanted, but you did a lot off the court as well with the Say Her Name campaign and everything going on. What has your mental space been the last two months in the Wubble? Um, this bubble situation, not it for me, um, <laughs> if I'm being honest about it. Um, you know, this is tough, obviously, with everything that's going on um, in the world and being away from my family, um, being away from people that I love and, and knowing that um, I'm here and, and I'm here to do a job and I love basketball with all my heart and, and I'm so fortunate and grateful to be in this situation and, and be in the bubble where I feel safe. Um, you know, I have the ability to get tested and the ability to, to, to be in a place that I get to do what I love. Um, but it's definitely been hard being away from family, um, dealing with an injury, um, being in a slump and not being able to get away from basketball or go to something, you know, that I'm typically used to doing. Um, so that's been been tough on the mental, but, you know, we get through it. And I'm fortunate that I've had really awesome teammates um, who are really fun to be around and, and they're great people. So um, that makes it a little bit easier. Thank you. Jeff Magliocetti. Hi, Kia. Thank you for joining us. I've asked some of your teammates this question, but since you've been on the forefront on some of the uh, societal and social issues here in the WNBA that they've covered, how can the league and the team in general continue to expand their message once we're outside the bubble and hopefully back in home arenas by 2021? Yeah, well, I think it's obviously um, a big forefront question for us and something that we're really looking into. I think when we are able to hopefully get back into market um, like what I think most people should be doing, it's working within the community that you're in. Um, so for me, obviously, that community consists of where I'm from back home in Canada and also the community of Brooklyn and, and where I spend the other half of my year. Um, and I think that's going to be a big part of it. We're really fortunate because our owners um, are incredible. You know, Joe Sai and, and Clara Wu have done so many incredible things already to step up um, and be front runners on the help and the need that uh, the help we need for, to create change and, and reform. So I think that'll be a big part of it and, and social justice initiatives that we can kind of really focus on while we're in market is a little bit different than what we can can do from here in terms of um, being out in the community um, and being in different places physically. Um, so I think that'll be a big part of it. While we all go overseas or whatever we're doing in this off season, um, it's going to be a matter of continuing to use our voices and use our platforms. Obviously, wherever you are, that's another community that you're in and another place where you can reach people um, and really start to amplify stories, whether it's your own story or stories of people um, within your community as well. So I think that'll be a big piece too. Awesome. Thank you, Kia. Miles Early. Thank you. Uh, this season was never going to be easy, as we were talking about a little bit before, with the quick turnaround times for games and the relative isolation of the level. You talked earlier this season about meditation and others across both the W and the NBA have mentioned the mental, the mental health challenges the environment could create. Uh, what's been your biggest takeaway in terms of personal growth from your third professional season? Um, you know, for me, obviously, this isn't the way that I wanted this year to go. It's not how I prepared for it. Um, you know, I think I did everything right that I could have done and with the circumstances that happened with the, the shutdowns and um, not being able to get into the gym for a little bit, um, you know, so I think the biggest part of my growth has been, I'm my own worst critic, no matter what anybody says about me, I probably already told myself that like four weeks ago, um, so I, I think it's been tough just in the sense of I wanted to be a better basketball player this season, um, and I made such a big jump in that second year that I kind of missed whatever slump or that second years usually go through, and now I'm getting it here. Um, and that's been tough. And I think just learning to continue to, to give myself a little bit of a break once in a while and, and find a way to understand that I'm not the only professional athlete who's ever had a bad year. It doesn't define a career. Um, but just trying to figure out mentally how to stay up and, and how to stay positive and how to stay positive towards myself um, that's been a big challenge. And usually I get that from my family members who are around me or, or just getting away from basketball, going to watch a movie at a, a movie theater or something like that. Um, and I can't get that here. So that's been probably the biggest thing I'm learning is really finding ways that you can 
take care of yourself. Um, and meditation became one of those ways. Um, and really learning how to get through this, even though it's definitely not the way that I expected this year to go or wanted it to go. Jackie Powell. Yeah, I love hearing you talk about self-care. I think that's so important. Um, so when we talked to Lasia on these days are melting together, I think it was Monday, um, or no, it was yesterday, I'm sorry. Um, Lasia mentioned that being on, or on this team and within this organization is sort of an extension of the road, sort of less traveled. You know, there were a lot of rookies, there were a lot of challenges, and there are a lot of challenges this season. So what I'm wondering is, is, is there a moment that you're really going to remember and take away from this season that makes it all worth it in the end? You know, away yeah. from... Yeah, I mean, I think what's interesting is when we do look at this season, um, the word new comes up more often than not. You know, new coaches, new players, um, new system. Um, for me, there's been a lot of news in my career. Uh, this is the first time that I've been... Um, really like a primary scorer since probably back in high, my high school days. Um, so everything's kind of been new. Learn this, do that, figure something out, find a new way to, to get yourself out of a hole or get yourself out of a, a tough day. Um, so I think there's, there's always something to, to bring and learn from here. I think you're right. This is the road less traveled and what we're trying to do, um, you know, not only on the court in terms of uh, our systems right now, but also within our locker room and within our culture. Um, it's different than what I've been around before. So I think it's definitely um, lots to take away from it. Uh, I think the, the bright spot about it is that we continuing, we're continuing to grow, um, everybody, you know, and, and that's both on and off the court. And it's fun to watch that. And it's fun to be a part of that. Um, and hopefully um, for these new faces in the league and our rookies, obviously the season didn't go the way that we wanted it to in, in terms of records and wins and losses. But I'm hoping they really got to enjoy their first professional um, season and they continue to grow and they continue to be as fearless and as confident as they have been. Erica Ayala. Uh, thanks, Kia. In a similar vein to the, the line of questioning, I wanted to actually ask about the, the term baby vet. Obviously, that was something coming in that, that got a lot of play. But I'm curious now that, that you're almost to the close of your third season, if you've thought in a little, if you think differently about the, the term rookie, um, but also if you think differently about the term veteran and what it takes uh, to be a veteran in the WNBA. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm still kind of in the middle. Um, and that's kind of where I always am in my career. And, and that's okay for now. Um, I'm not mad about that. I think I've, I've definitely learned there's a, a different level to being a vet and each person is going to be different. So the way that Leja and Zowie lead is going to be really different from the way that me and Stokes lead. Um, and I think that's important is having all of those different little um, intricacies and those different little personalities and things that, you know, make people tick to help find a way to, to succeed. Um, I think that's been the, the big difference in that what I've learned here. Obviously, I've been really fortunate to be around a lot of great leaders throughout my career. Um, and they've all done a lot of different things, but it's really trying to find my own way um, in terms of leadership and whether that just be being my goofy self and, and bringing energy or whether that be um, playing hard every single night and every single possession, regardless of um, what the scoreboard says. So I think, you know, for, for me, it's just been a matter of continuing to kind of be the bridge um, between the rookies and, and the vets. You know, I was in their shoes not long ago. Um, two years exactly so being able to help them through those little things and and what I went through when I was a rookie and what I went through when I was technically a rookie on the national team for four years um really figuring that out um but yeah I would say it's just continuing to grow um I, I can be a baby vet for a couple more years I think I'm hoping Zachary Diamond hi Kia <clears throat> I was wondering what has impressed you the most about Coach Hopkins' first season as head coach? I think he has a really good ability to, to teach. And whether that be when we're in film sessions and slowing things down, um, not only does he teach us from just pointing at the screen and telling us where we, we messed up, but also he gets up and he gets up there and shows us the stances that we probably should have been in and that would have helped us. Um, so I love that he has that ability and that he genuinely likes to connect with people and he tries to connect and have a, a relationship with each of us um, so that he knows how we're feeling about things on the court um, to make sure that we can kind of all succeed and we're all happy in that sense. So I've been really impressed 
um, with his ability to do that and his ability to teach. Cool, thank you. Erica Ayala. Yeah, I wanted to circle back around. This is actually a question I've always wanted to ask you, but never really could find a way to, to, to get to it. But I, I know better than to ask you to sing, but I am curious, what led you to um, be trained in, in opera singing? Like, this, is that something that comes from your family? Or, like, I'm just curious where that comes from. Opera, oh, my God. Opera singing? I think, isn't that, aren't you, like, a trained no. singer? No. It's a lie, but it's gotten around. Been well. See, look at that. Now I had no idea. I, th I believed yeah. you. Yeah. Good poker face. PD believed me at UConn too for like two years. <laughs> but I think she's the one who started the rumor. I'm pretty sure she started telling people I was actually trained. And then I ran into someone who had a trained daughter and that was it. That was the end of it. Oh, that was the end of it. All right, cool. Well, so like singing not on the radar at all. Not, not, not. I used vibe. to sing when I was younger. Like I sing now to make myself happy, but I used to sing when I was younger in talent shows and stuff, but over, I'm over that. Nice. All right, cool. Now I got, now I got the scoop. <laughs> Jackie Powell. Oh, Erica, I love that you asked that question. Um, I have heard that you were into musical theater, but that's a whole other discussion. What I did want to ask you was just going back to this idea of a culture. You talked about how this is a different culture, different team culture that you've experienced before. So I want to know how and also how do you think this journey looks for this team in getting to that winning culture that's been talked about and sort of how you build that? Yeah, so essentially when you come into a team, you kind of already have that culture and it's built around the vets that have been there before. Um, so that's how it was when I went to school. Um, I walked in and uh, Stokes and, and Kalina and Stewie and Mariah and Morgan, they all are, we already had that culture set. You just followed their ways. Here, what's really different is that we're all really new. Um, so when we came into this, um, you know, Zowie has never really had to be a vet before. Um, Stokes, same way. Myself, same way. Leja has, ha has been in that role before, but she's also brand new. So we had never played with her. Um, so we are completely building that from scratch um, based on obviously the, the principles and the philosophies that um, Coach Walt has in place for us. So that's a lot, obviously, the fact that we have a ton of rookies. Um, for the most part, you only usually have one, two, three rookies backs and you're, you're sitting within that culture. You, you can be a rookie. You can make those rookie mistakes. You can do all that stuff. We, they had to be treated like they've been in this league for a long time right away because there was so many of them. Um, and that was a big part of our culture was just understanding, like, we're all professional athletes. You're sorry that your, your switch to it is going to come real fast and, and it's going to come um, game after game after game, but you got to get on board and you got to get on board real quick. And I think that's been um, really fun to be a part of and, and something that we're learning. And obviously we also have Shell P in our locker room who's got a ton of winning experience, right? So having her and having um, her knowing and understanding and willing to talk to us about things that she's learned um, throughout her career when she's been on teams that have had bad years and teams that have won, right? And, and having that culture as well, what are the, the habits that we want to make now, um, even when we're going through these last three games, um, to make ourselves stand out? And whether that takes, you know, two years to, to solidify itself, uh, I think it'll be a, a little bit easier next year, obviously having some familiarity with it. Um, but yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Last question, Rafik Lewison. Hey, Kia Nurse. I'd like to, uh, first of all, congrats on getting through your third season of WNBA. Second of all, like you mentioned, you're in your third season. How you managed to able to team up with the rest of the rookies on the roster, and how do you think they developed to be the players that they are coming toward the end of the season? Yeah, I mean, it's really been, uh, sorry. Oh. Sorry. I had to turn that battery though. Um, it's been really fun to get to uh, know our rookies and, and play alongside them. Um, they're all really, really good people, like I said, and I think they're extremely talented. Um, it's a bit of a jump to come from college to the WNBA, and they had to do it quickly, and they also had to do it um, playing a lot of minutes and playing meaningful minutes, and that's not the easiest thing to do in the world, and they've done it. Um, they've taken it in stride. They've done it fearlessly, and that's been really fun to see. So I think they're going to continue to, de to develop. Um, it's really uncommon for rookies to get the amount of minutes that all of them are getting and, and the different experiences they're getting playing against 
you know, the Candace Parkers of the world, the Brianna Stewart's, um, you know, that's really awesome for them. And I think they're going to continue to develop and really grow from having this year under their belt and having this experience right away. Great. Thank you, Kia. Um, you can now leave the Zoom. Next, we're going to have Kylie Shook, everyone. Just give Kylie. Um, and we will get to everyone. We'll start with Jeff Magliocchetti. Oh, excuse me. Uh, good afternoon, Kylie. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so what, how are you guys, how are you guys as a rookie class going to judge success? What will be your barometer of success over these final three games? Just keep progressing. Um, I feel like we've grown a lot this season from beginning to almost end. So I feel like we're, we're all still focused. We're all still playing hard. We're all still trying to go out with a bang. So um, basically just continue to grow throughout these last three games. And uh, Alicia, can I ask a follow-up? Sure. Uh, what is progress to you personally? What is growth to you personally? Um, personally, just trying to be more consistent um, with my effort, defense, the things that I can control, um, calming down talking to myself before the game. Um, so in the games that I felt like I've done good, where I'm just consistent and again, like across the stat sheet is what I want to continue in these last three games. Um, just mainly just effort for me. Would be. Thanks, Kylie. Thank you. Jackie Powell. Hey, Kylie, good to see you. It was great to see you back on the court as well. Um, so what I want to know from you is I want you to reflect a little bit on sort of what you've learned here in this wobble beyond basketball. What is something that you're going to take away really for the rest of your professional career, but also just for your life as a human being? Yeah, I would say, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I would say how to maintain stress in these type of situations. Um, I mean, clearly we're in our bubble, so we don't have any anything to distract us from what is going on in our life. So I think I learned about myself that I really put my issues aside and go distract myself in the actual world outside the bubble. So I think this has really been an eye-opening process to finding new ways on how to take care of my mental health and my body and just me as a whole. So uh, that's definitely probably the biggest thing that I'll take out of this. Besides that, just maturing always, growing up. Um, I mean, we are out of college. Well, I am <laughs> out of college. So just kind of learning what it's like now. Miles early. Hey, Kylie. According to Synergy, you're in the 90th percentile in the entire league when you're the screener in a pick and roll. Uh, you're equally effective on the pick and pop. Has your comfort level grown throughout the season as we've seen you shoot more from, from distance recently, or is it just a matter of settling into the minutes more consistently that you're getting? More threes? Is that what uh, you said? Or just even long twos. Like you're more, more comfortable with your jumper oh. recently. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I would say at the beginning of the season, well, all throughout college, I, I was mainly pick and pop, and I was very comfortable with threes. And then this season, my shot wasn't falling. So I had to learn new ways to score and impact our team. Um, so I think, yeah, my jump shot's coming back because I'm gaining confidence with it. Um, three is still kind of iffy because we are in the situation we're in. We don't have unlimited gym time and, um, where they have to take care of those aspects. But, uh, uh I would say, yeah, my, my jumper is pretty consistent at this point because of the confidence key and my three is not. And then the pick and roll is really what I've had to be consistent in because I'm not hitting outside shots and I do want to make an impact on the offensive end for my team. Great, thank you. Thank you. Zach Diamond. Hey, Kylie, going off that question, what specific part of your game do you want to most improve for next season? Um, I would say defensive, but um, I feel like I'm coming into my own um, on this league by watching the vets. But for um, offensively, being aggressive, being able to handle the ball, um, whether it's on the elbow or on the short corner, I want to do that better. And I want to definitely get back into my shot, back into the rhythm of my shot. I'm back confident shooting. Uh, so that'll be something to work on in the off season or overseas season to gain the play and the flow of the game again. Thank you, Kylie. Follow up. What has most impressed you 
about Coach Hopkins this season? Oh, no. Hey, Kylie. Hey, sorry, I, I can't hear. I, now I can hear you. Not bad. Uh, what has impressed you the most about Coach Hopkins, his first season as head coach? Uh, how much he pays attention to everything, every little detail. And he's um, very patient with us. And um, he's, a, he's a very good teacher because if you think about it, we're all, it's pretty much a whole new team. We had Stokes, Nurse, and Zowie who've all played together before. But other than that, we have six, well, seven rookies at the beginning, six rookies now. So I would say just his patient level and the way that he coaches us and teaches us stuff and how he slows down and explains why we need to do a certain thing um, is first off amazing and very helpful. And then second off, I think it shows a lot about who he is and how much he cares to coach us and how much he cares about players and the team atmosphere. Great, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Ayala. Hey, Kylie, you alluded to overseas just a little while ago. Obviously, you we, we have an end date uh, for your WNBA part of that. But um, I'm just curious, it's still kind of an unprecedented time. Uh, there are rookie classes that have never really had to deal with what your, your rookie class is dealing with. Um, what, what does this transition from the WNBA to overseas look like for you uh, right now, if you have any indication? Um, it's still kind of a up in the air, but we did get our schedule. My first game's October 3rd, so it's a quick turnaround for me. But um, I don't know, it'll be an experience. I've never been that far overseas before. I think the furthest I've gone is like Costa Rica. So that'll be interesting. Um, but I don't know, I'm actually kind of eh, kind of interested in what my process will be like. But as of right now, I just know uh, probably fly out a week-ish later after season's done and just get to going out there. Um, like you said, it's crazy times going on in the world, so I'm just going to make the best out of what happens, um, take all safety precautions, and try to play some ball. Kind of going off of that, you will have some time to, to go home. Brief brief period, it sounds like, but some time. Uh, have you thought about some of the first things that you'd really like to enjoy coming out of the bubble, but then also knowing that you'll have to, uh, or at least the plan is to go overseas? Uh, are there any things on the short list of things to do? Uh, no, not really. Um, one major thing I was wanting to do was see my uncle, because sadly he's sick. So I'm happy I have the time to go spend some time with him before I do go overseas. Um, that's mainly the, the thing I want to do. So happy about that. Sounds good. Blessings to your family then. Thank you. Jackie Power. Hey again, Kylie. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this idea of team culture. And since you and Jazz have come from Louisville and that culture has been defined for years, so I want to know sort of what it's like coming into an environment where the culture is sort of being started from scratch. And with knowing all of that, sort of how do you see that this culture builds in the coming years? Um, to start off, I think all of us off the court, we're all friends, we all hang out, we all like each other. So I think that's a big factor in the building culture on the court and building culture in the next years trying to build what we want to build here but um just just mainly um being respectful to each other which we are um liking each other we don't have any problems um so that's the main thing i think in my opinion is how we all bond off the court which makes us bond better on the court and i think the coaches do a very good job at um kind of showing us what we should do and explaining to us why we're doing this and kind of what they want in the team and how we should treat each other, treat the coaches. And I think that'll definitely play over in the next years. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Last question, Rafik Lewison. This season has kind of been like very different from any other basketball season that you played your entire life. Can you differentiate like playing in front of fans and playing without fans in the bubble? Like not just in WNBA, but in general as a basketball player overall. Can you repeat your question? You went in and out. Okay. This season you played an entire year in the bubble compared to past basketball seasons where you played in front of fans and arenas. 
How different is it for you? In my opinion, it's not much different. Um, sometimes it's more calming. Sometimes it's more nerve wracking because fans do get you hyped. But other times, I mean, like at the beginning of the season, I was so scared and nervous. I was like, oh, my God, it's my first WNBA game. So it was kind of nice not having fans because you got to be calm in this in the situation. Um, but, I mean, I'm just going out to play my game, enjoy my teammates and the sport that I love playing. So, I mean, it's definitely different. It is nice to have fans and people who support you being there by your side. But um, I think it's it's just the year that you got to keep rocking with. So. Jackie Powell. So sorry about this uh, memory uh, slip there. But so last night you were against some pretty legendary players and a Candace Parker and a, and a Neka Agumake. And, you know, I sort of saw that you showed some, some emotion there. Um, and also just when you were in the pick and roll with Lasia, it didn't work those first couple of times, but then that third time you got it to work. So just can you take me through all of that and just how you you persevered through that? I mean, I don't think all players would be like, oh, nope, we're going to do it again. We're going to do it again. We didn't get it that first couple of times. But you you called it. You put your hand up there. Um, I would say my thinking process is, uh, well, first off, me rolling the basket, even if they pinch in or um, they help it at least opens up my other teammates. And that's the main reason why I keep on doing it. Um, even though it doesn't come to me, I feel like I'm still helping the team because somebody either tags me or helps or, and that leaves one of my teammates open to make another play. But um, I'll just, like you said, just keep on going, keep on pushing because um, you're going to get something out of it, which, which is what we did. And like you said, they are amazing players and they do have a wonderful reputation. So if I can, my mentality is if I can score on them, then I can, I can score on anybody because, I mean, they're, they're the elite of the elite. So um, I think it's more so a confidence thing, too. Thanks, Kylie. I appreciate it. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Kylie. And thanks, everyone, for joining. We'll send the recording Thank shortly. Thanks, guys.